Should have worked this time. Hey, Lewis, you did live before and it cut off on you? A couple of seconds, see if we get back on. Add him back. How I do that? I'll press the, uh, let me see. Hold up. Hmm. Daquan, Dante. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, that's true. Everybody abusing the live now. I don't think he saw it yet. I just sent him a invitation. Cut off at the wrong time. He's about to get into him in the NFL. And, you know, once he... Was in the NFL, what was it like for him? Once you get into some money that you've never seen before, um, just the you know things you have to deal with on and off the field, being an undrafted free agent, what are some things that he's gonna, he can tell some other undrafted free agents how to go about you know, practicing, showing up on time, you the underdog, how you gonna make it to you know, a point where you make the roster. And he'll talk about some of the, you know, the things he had to face, you know, being in the NFL, some stuff that happened to him and, you know, going to how it was for him once he left and how he had to do a whole, you know, 180 uh, for himself and for his family and things like that. Um, just join. Let me see. I don't know why. It's not letting me add him. Um, I'm trying to add you, uh, Isaiah. Let me see. It's not letting me add. Um, dang, hold on one second. Anybody know how to fix it if he's, um, okay, never mind, I got it. That should be back. Thanks for y'all being patient. I'm waiting for him. About time. I thought you left me. I thought you <laughs> yeah, I don't know hey, what happened, bro. Like that. Yeah, that was crazy, bro. I was trying to fix it, but it finally went through. Not right, bad. We got two oils <clears throat> that stuck around. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that's dope. I appreciate y'all, right. man. But where we left off at was you were talking about your senior year and how yeah. you, like, 110% focus, ready to go. You yeah. taste the NFL right yeah. there. And talking about the season you had, I believe you said it wasn't the best, you know, uh, yeah. season. Go into more about that in your senior year in total and how you, you know, were prepared to the NFL and, you know, go from there. So pretty much, um, so once my senior season ended, like I said, my senior year, I didn't really do too good as an individual and my team didn't really do too good overall. Right. So it, going to the league, it started to look shaky. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, there's no way this is going to work out for me. I started to have doubts. I'm like, there's no way this is going to work out for me. Um, I didn't do too good. Right. Ain't no telling how this is going to pan out. Um, I remember uh, going to one of my teachers. I think he was a psych teacher that I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I always try to learn from, like, the older people around me. You know what I'm saying? It's just get their advice on life and the decisions that you need to make and just get their opinion and see what they say. And as I was thinking that, I was, you know, like asking my teacher, mind you, he know nothing about football. 
right. anything of that nature. I'm just trying to help him. I'm trying to ask him for help to, you know, make a life decision. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much told him, like, I'm like, hey, man, um, I didn't really do too, do too good my senior year. You know, I need to start looking for jobs. I need to build my resume up. You know, I'm about to graduate. You know, worst case scenario, I don't make it to the NFL. At least I'll have a degree. Mind you, to be honest, as a college athlete, we didn't have no chances to take internships, do any externships, anything of that nature to set ourselves up to be able to apply for a job to right. go into the working class, into the real world. So I'm just asking him, like, you know, should I continue to work out, you know, and prepare for a pro day, you know, if some scouts do come down? Or should I just, you know, call it quits, you know, go back home, try to build my resume, go do some internships and try to get into like a company? Mm. Mind you, um, I, my degree was in uh, criminal justice. Okay. Um, I started that degree from from ASA. I didn't really like criminal justice. Um, every, when I thought about it, I thought about, you know, you can become a police officer, um, an undercover investigator. You know, I'm from the hood. Like, we don't like cops. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's just the mentality. Like, you know what I'm saying? Even though being away, it kind of changed my mentality and stuff like that a little bit. It helped me grow. But I didn't want to like do anything in a criminal justice field. Like I didn't know what I was going to do. Honestly, in hindsight, I kind of feel like I was forced into taking a criminal justice degree from junior college because if you take a degree in junior college that'll give you enough credits to transfer to a four-year institution, you won't have no problems academically making that transition. You won't be set back or you will have enough credits to meet the NCAA requirements to, to be a student athlete, to be eligible to play immediately once you get to that four-year institution. Mm -hmm. So being an ASA, they kind of gear you up to take these certain specific classes so you can transfer to any school. And we all know criminal justice transfers to any school in the nation. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has a criminal justice program. So if it was up to me, I would have never did criminal justice. But at that point, I didn't really think about the degree so much. It was just worst case scenario, I'll have a degree and figure yeah. it out from there. Mm -hmm. So um, after speaking to this teacher, he was telling me that, you know, continue to get football year all, mm -hmm. you know, because at the end of the day, when you're, when it's all said and done, you'll be able to look yourself in the mirror and say, I gave it all I could give. Right. You know, and I took that to the heart because I was already feeling that way. He kind of just gave me the confirmation to go that way. And that, that talk that you will get from your father, like sons hang in there, you know, do what you got to do. Like, mind right. you, at this time, I'm still navigating everything. You know, my family's from the street, so I'm learning all this stuff on my own. They don't really, nobody never been to college, you know, things of that nature. I'm first generation, like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm figuring a lot of this stuff out on my own. So once he told me to, to be able to look myself in the mirror and to give it my all, I took that and, and I ran with it. Right. Uh, prior to that, going into my senior year, it was this, I'll never forget the guy's name, it was this kid named Quake Cox from the University of Jack, Jackson State University, the defensive back. Uh, he was pretty good. He went, but when he, in, he went to the league. Yeah, he went to the league. Um, he ended up, he coming from a small school too, same conference as me, not really getting that many looks like that, but he was pretty good. They knew he had potential NFL talent. Yeah. So prior going into my senior year, what he did on Twitter, I followed him on Twitter, he was promoting his highlight tape on Twitter. Okay. He was, he would, he would link his highlight tape to his tweet and add like NFL scouts, yeah. Weight room coaches, NFL GMs, presidents, senior bowl people. He would use his Twitter platform to promote his highlight tape and add all these people that are in the same uh, realm and surroundings of the NFL scouts and to get basically to get an NFL team attention. Right. So I remember we used to watch that on Twitter during our senior year. Dudes was like, yo, why Quake Cox keep, I remember hearing guys, why he keep promoting his highlight tape? Nobody wants to keep seeing it. Mind you, he's promoting this thing 20 times a day, mm -hmm. adding different scouts all over the country. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, he used to get a lot of feedback from scouts, like, man, your highlight's pretty good. You know, you're from a small school, but I think you might have a chance. So when it was my senior, mind you, he was a year ahead of me. So when my senior year came, I remember thinking back in hindsight, I remember what Quay Cox did. Right. So now I'm using the same strategies that he used on a Twitter platform to promote himself. Mind you, Arkansas Palm Love, people don't even know where that's at. No offense yeah. to Arkansas. It's just like in the middle like of Arkansas. Like, who goes to Arkansas? Yeah. So I remember using his strategy after my senior, mind you, like I said, we didn't do good. 
and I didn't do good individually, but I was like, the little film that I do have throughout my career, I'm gonna put this thing together. I'm gonna make it like a movie. Like when you watch it, you're gonna be like, that kid is nice. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna make this thing look good. So at, when I did that, I remember sending, now I'm on Twitter, sending it out, tweeting, tweeting, tweeting. Mind you, my follow wasn't even that crazy. But I knew that if I add these NFL scouts and coaches, somebody's going to see it. It worked for Quay Cox. He ended up getting into the senior bowl. I don't know if I'm going to get into that, but somebody's going to see this. I'm going to get an opportunity. Yeah. So mind you, I'm a 6'6". Six, six, I'm 6'6 six, six kid. You're 6'6", six, six, 215 solid. I really don't know my 40 at the time, but I know I was pretty fast. And I knew in the back of my mind that I had some tip-top potential like to be able to play on that level. Like, you know what I'm saying? I used to feel like I was a, at Palm Bluff that I was a big fish in a small pond. These cats can't hold me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not to be cocky. I wasn't the best athlete. I played with a lot of guys that were better than me, but that's just how I felt. Like, you know what I'm saying? So when my senior year came, I just kept promoting my highlight tape. Dudes on my team, I see them in the cafeteria. Like, yo, Ferb, stop posting this thing on Twitter, bro. We tired of seeing your highlight tape, bro. The only views you got is from us. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stop promoting that thing. Mind you, in the midst of promoting my holiday, I'm still going to the weight room. I'm still going to jog. I'm still taking care of my academics. Because worst case scenario, I have to graduate because I want that degree on the back. And worst case scenario, this league stuff don't work out. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I kept promoting, kept promoting. Probably like three weeks later, I end up getting a call from a scout. I mean, not from a scout, from an NFL agent. Yeah. Uh, this guy named Dante Robinson. So I'm like, he's like, oh, you look good, six six wide receiver. Uh, pretty fast, film look good. I think if we get you down to a four, a low four four, you have a shot at the lead. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, I'm like, man, this is Twitter, man. This ain't gonna work, bro. Like, I'm not really now. I'm telling my roommate, I'm like, yo, bro, I got some feedback. Da, 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 da. Now he hype. He now he thinking about his senior, trying to he just get himself out there. So I'm like, I don't know if it's gonna work. You know, this guy's in Seattle. I don't really trust him. You know, I don't know what I should do. So I'm just entertaining the guy. Like, yeah, you're an NFL scout. I'm doing research on him. See that he got a few guys in the league and stuff like that. So I'm like, hmm. This guy might be official. I'm, I'm reaching out to the guys that he worked out, you know, prior yeah. to, you know, speaking to me, you know, getting the background. Yo, is this guy's legit? You know, is he getting guys in the league? Is he, you know, is he helping guys out? And they pretty much told me, you know, he's legit. Like, he's helping guys out. He's based out, he's based out of Seattle, Washington. Mind you, I don't even know what Seattle, Washington is. I never even heard it. I'm thinking Washington, D.C. I'm like, I'll go to D.C. Yeah. You know, it's not the problem with the crib. No, they're like, no, Seattle, Washington, West Coast. Like, yeah. different time zone. Like, you know what I'm saying? So... Uh, did some research on him. He like a couple weeks later, he ended up sending a contract for me to sign to him as one of his clients to be a part of his NFL agency. So yeah. now I get the letter in the mail. So now I'm like, woo! I'm, I'm super hyped. Now I'm showing my roommates. I'm like, yo, I got a shot. This dude. Now I'm reading through the contract. The average person will probably send a contract to their parent or send it to a lawyer to make sure it's legit. I'm looking at the contract. I'm googling everything myself. I'm like, okay, I give him three percent. What does this mean? Um, what if I get hurt? You know, what if I don't make the roster? Do I still have to pay him? Mm -hmm. So I ended up going showing the teacher guy who was helping me out, ended up showing him the contract. He was like, look, you know, things are lining up for you. You, you know you were second guessing it. You know, you thought about going to get a job. You know, this guy from Twitter, he seems like he's legit. You did the mm -hmm. research on him. He sent you the contract. Give this thing a shot. But I'm like, I've never been to Seattle. Like, how, what if I go out there and um, this guy's not legit? I fly out there and something bad goes, something bad happens. So he's like, man, at the end of the day, you know, you can handle yourself. Go give it a shot because worst case scenario, you, it goes back to I, was, I gave it my all. And, you know, in hindsight, in the long run, 10 years later down the line, I could look myself in the mirror and said I did everything I needed to do on the academic side and on the field. I will have no regrets with that. So um, I end up a couple weeks later, I end up flying out to Seattle. Dude was legit. Felt weird. I'm like, yo, what's going on, bro? You know, da, 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 da. He's like, I'm waiting for a couple other guys. Um, I was one of the guys that flew in. We had a few other guys that flew in from University of Miami, University of Arizona, like all these big schools. Yeah. So I, dude was telling me, like, you know, I'm not from a big school, but he'll take a shot on shot with me because, you know, I'm a 6'6 kid. You know, um, he, he know my background. He did some research on me. I'm pretty fast. He feels like he can get me to a certain 40 speed through, his, yeah. through the training and preparing for the pro day. I would, I would turn some heads. Yeah. So mind you, I get to Seattle, Washington. It was kind of weird at first, you know, I'm around these guys that I don't know, don't know the guy. Uh, yeah. we, everybody lands, you know, we go out to dinner and stuff like that. I think it was like at a, um, a Thai restaurant, I'm eating or whatever. We just talking to everybody, you know, saying what school they from. You know, I'm just being quiet for the most part, just keeping out the scene. And once, once we get there, uh, we end up going to like this condominium that they rented us out. 
we get to the condominium. It got like a pool, a pool in the condominium. They got a pool room, a movie theater. So I'm like, I'm like, this is the life. Okay, they set me up right. They they give all of us a couple dollars. You know what I'm saying? You know, just you know, if y'all want to get some extra snacks. So I'm going in there. I'm with these other guys from these big schools and stuff like that or whatever. So get to the condo. Everybody picking it, mind you. I think altogether it was probably like maybe like eight of us. And we all stayed in this apartment. I think it was like two guys in a room, somebody in a living room. Then some guys from bigger schools had their own individual room or whatever, whatever. And then um, so we out there in Seattle. Now I'm hyped and ready to go. Uh, we, next, the next day we go to the facility that we're going to be working out at. So pretty much for pro day, you have a couple months up until your actual pro day. So basically I flew out to Seattle probably like early January after my senior year. And I stayed in Seattle prior from like January to like my pro day was probably like early April or late late right. March or something like that. I'm not sure the exact timeline, but I think it was like late March. So you train from 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 basically late January to late March, gearing up from the pro day. Uh, the pro day is pretty much like a it's, you could compare it to an interview as if you're going on a job interview in corporate America trying to get a job. Uh, when it comes to the pro day, you know they go over your 40 time, your broad jump, you know. Um, yeah, your bench press, you know, and stuff like that or whatever. So as I was out there in Seattle training, the facility that distance, it wasn't that bad. It was the facility was like walking distance from where we were staying at. So right. I was once again, I was focused. Like my mindset was worst case scenario, I would be able to look myself in the mirror and say I gave it my all and I did everything I need to do. So while we was in Seattle training, we trained like uh Excuse me. We train it like, like three times a day, you know, in the morning. We got a morning session. You know, we eat. We got an afternoon session. And when we was in Seattle, they had it set up to where we would get, like, meals, like, healthy meals that we had to eat to, like, help transform our body. Instead of eating outside food, they'd give us meal. The lady would come probably, like, every Tuesday and Thursday. So we just working out and eating, working out and eating for months, months, two times a day, three times a day, grinding. Yeah. Most guys was BSing. Most guys were, like, smoking you know, drinking and stuff like that. From time to time, I'll have a drink, a hair or two. You know, we'll go out and check, check the club scene. But right. these guys were from bigger schools, so they had, like, more of a look than me. I'm, I'm happy to be mixed in with these guys because I know if I could compete with this, this type of talent that somebody will recognize me and my talents, and I know I can use that to my benefit. Like, you know what I'm saying? So as I was out there training, man, I just wanted to give it my all. Like, you know, I didn't care what nobody think. I, anybody liked me or anything like that. I just knew that I was going to grind. And our actual personal trainer named Tracy Ford, he was, he was a new guy as far as training guys in the phase of transitioning from Division One to the league. He only had like two draft classes prior to us coming in, if I'm not mistaken. So he had the same mindset as me as far as like, yeah, excuse underdog. me. Yeah, he had that underdog mentality. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, we got heat. We got to get it, fellas. Like, you know, we going to grind out here. Like, a lot of y'all guys from big schools, but y'all was looked over at y'all big school. We got Ferg here. He's from a small school, but he got some big-time talent. You know, we dogs. We going to eat. Like, you know, and I, I had that same mentality. I came to grind. Like, I came to eat. Like, you know what I'm saying? So every day it was hard, man. Like, I mean, when I first get in there, I ended up cramping up. I was second. I'm like, I can't see out. I'm trying to go home. I'm not doing this. I was ready to leave. I had talks with Tracy. He man, like, hanging in, man. You got some big-time potential. You know, tough it out. You going to make it through. Um, I remember just going through his workouts. We used to get, like, ice baths and stuff like that. And um. When I got to the facility and I got to the, you know, the, the, the town of Seattle, man, like I just stayed focused, man. Like I ate the food that they gave me. Um, I didn't really eat out like that, but on weekends I might dibble dabble on some pizza. But for the most part, I was eating like a lot of greens, a lot of plants, you know, a lot of protein based stuff. Like, again, I did the academic piece. I graduated, you know, I'm moving on to get ready for my pro day. I want to be able to look myself in the mirror to be like, I gave him my all. That dog mentality, like nobody can't take this from me. I'm going to grind. It don't matter which school I came from. It don't matter what I did my senior year. It don't matter what my team did. I'm going to be so good when nobody could deny it. That was my mindset. Ain't no telling if this was going to work. I wasn't the most cocky person, not really outspoken like that. But in my heart of hearts, I knew that if I give it my all, somebody's going to find me. And Tracy just confirmed that because he had the same mentality as me. So when it got hard, you know, he showed me that you could grind and make it through. Right. And even though that process was hard, it was hard as hell. What helped me when we got there, we ended up speaking to uh, a sports psychologist, mm. which was, it, it was, it was kind of weird for me because, you know, from where I'm from, you, 
you hear about psychologists or psychiatrists, you know, we don't deal with them type of people. Like I handle mine on my own, like, you know what I'm saying? But when I sat down with the psychologist, um, I spoke, I sat down with him face to face. We sat and spoke for about two hours straight about my life journey, pretty much what I'm, what I'm doing here. And he, you, he showed me how to use all the negativity and trauma that I've been through as a kid and as a young adult to be able to use that as strength to propel me to go to the next level, you know? And he, he, what he showed me is basically how to, we used to call this thing called tap in, like, you know, to tap into that zone. So when right. things get hard, you know, to go back in your mind and mm -hmm. use that strategy to tap in and to remind yourself why you're here, who are you right. doing it for, you know, who's, who's counting on you, like, you know what I'm saying? So once he, once he taught me that, he taught me about like visualization, you know, keeping your eye on the prize, you know, in my mirror in the condo where we were staying at, I wrote on the mirror, I will run a 4-4. On my ceiling above my bed, I wrote, I will run a 4-4. By the TV, I wrote down, I will run a 4-4. Yeah. Like he told me to visualize what I wanted to do to prepare for my future. I mean, anybody can look at that like it's weird, but I'm young. I'm not really thinking like so much of a visualizing thing or anything connect, anything like that. All I knew is I'm trying to go to the league and this guy seems like he can help me. So I was using that. I'm training. I'm thinking about it. I'm, I knew that I'm going to run this full form and do everything I need to do. Nothing's going to get in my way. So when I was grinding, man, I just did all that. I did all them different things. And one thing about tapping in heat, how I, how, what, I res what resonated with me, he told us, like, um, every time LeBron comes on to the, uh, to the basketball arena, he gets some powder. And he put it in his hand. He rubs he rub it in his hand like this. He goes like this. And that reminds him to tap in. To, to get ready to get in the zone. That's just like his, right. his reminder. That's, that's what he took from it, being a sports psychologist. Mm -hmm. And he said, he told me to find something that'll help your reminder, that will remind you to help you tap in. So I would carry a pen with me and the pen would be in my pocket. So every time things get hard or I think negative or think I might not make it, I would tap that pen. And that pen would remind me to like lock in, like let's go, like, you know, get ready. Mm -hmm. And that was the mindset, man. It was, it was one of the hardest journeys that I've ever been through. Physically and mentally, I wanted to quit several times, but I just wanted to give it my all, and I and I just let the chips fall where they may. At this point, I have my degree. You know, I'm getting an opportunity to train. I'm out here in Seattle on the West Coast. This is a hell of an experience. Never been over here before, and I'm going to grind and give it my all. And that lasted about four months. Mm -hmm. And then after that four yeah. months, all, of course, for those of y'all not familiar, it leads up to the pro day, which is, like you said, the big interview. And how did you feel going into the pro day? Were you kind of thinking, all right, if I do good, I'm going to get drafted? Or were you kind of like, you know, I'm basically going to be undrafted free agent? Like, where was your mind at? When it comes oh, to at that point, at that point, bro, like, I was on, I was like, thinking about it now, I was on go. Like, I didn't transfer yeah. my body. You know, I'm, I'm looking like an NFL guy, like, abs all cut up. Yeah. You know, I'm ready to, I didn't put so much work in. It's, in my mind, Trace used to tell us, like, there's no way this hard work is not going to pay off. It don't matter how smart you are, don't matter how good you are, don't matter. You put in the work. You're gonna this this hard work is gonna translate. He was like, you guys are fatigued right now because you've been working for the last past three and a half, four months. By the time your pro day come, you're gonna have a few days rest and everything's gonna come easy. It's just gonna be clicking, clicking, clicking. Right. Like you know, you spoke to the psychologist guy. He taught you how to tap in. When you get down to your pro pro day guys, you get ready for that big interview. Tap in. Yeah. So now at this point. I'm calling my school. I'm like, is any NFL scouts going to be there? You know, is anybody going to be there for my interview? Is any, is any of the 32 teams in the NFL is going to show up? Ferguson, we really don't know. We haven't heard anything. You know, if you come down, you know, your results will be put into some system that I don't even know of, that right. all scouts can see your numbers that you did. Once we record your interview and your times, everybody's going to be able to get it. They're going to use that, and they're going to evaluate you from that. Right. So at this point, I'm just studying other guys, looking what other guys did prior to me, looking at, you know, just visualizing what I'm going to do, you know, prepare myself, you know. And when I got down there to Pine Bluff, it was only three scenes coming out that year. It was me, uh, this, uh, my quarterback, uh, Ben Anderson, and it was another lineman guy. I forget his name. That's my boy. He probably going to be mad at me if he see this. <laughs> and my other guy, he was coming out. So it was only three of us coming out. So when I get back to the school, mind you, I got it at this point. I got an NFL body from training, so all the coaches look at me like, "Ooh, that boy Ferg is ready to go. Like he looking good." All my teammates is like, "Yeah, let's go, Big Ferg. We see you." And every, like all the young guys is looking at me like, "Damn, like he looks way different." Like 
or whatever. And now, mind you, I'm not really, I'm just like playing and cut and quiet because I knew, like at this point, I'm tapped in. Like I ain't here to talk. Now we waiting around. I'm like, any scouts is coming in? Nobody's here? Like, I know it'll be a small school, but like, you know, this is my day. Like I'm ready to perform. Like I prepared for this. Mm -hmm. Nobody came last minute, right before we was about to wrap up. Before we wasn't even going to have no pro day at this point. The Rams coming in. So yeah. now I'm like, now I'm like, hmm, okay. Right. Now, now everybody, because at this point, it's, it's kind of dull. Like, we're in the locker room, all the young guys in there, me and the two other guys getting ready. We warmed up already, waiting around, nobody coming. Coaches are trying to make some phone calls, see what's going on. So now the Rams come in. So now it was a Rams scout and his son. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, now, but my mindset through training and up to this point, I don't care if no scouts come. I don't care if one scout come. I don't care if all 32 teams come. I'm not worried about none of that. I can't control that. I'm focused on the things that I can control personally, and that's constantly working out, doing what I got to do, preparing for my big interview. I don't care about no outside forces. I don't care what nobody else says. I'm going to control what I can control and let the chips fall where they may. Mm -hmm. So even, like, no scouts are showing up, I still didn't let that frustrate me because I knew I was going to control what I can control, and that was my main focus. Hold on one second. Let me fix this charger. My bad. Yeah. Gotta make sure you say the phone can't die on on a, on a live. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I plugged it in, so we should be good. But yeah, so so uh so pretty much, bro. I was I was just prepared. I I was just wanted to control what I can control. So once the scout came in, like everybody's like, hey, Fern, he looking at you. He looking at you. I ain't really paying no mind because they don't they don't. I didn't tell nobody my strategy. I didn't tell nobody what I was thinking. Like. They don't know. All they know is I went to go train. Now I'm back and I look different. But I'm tapped in mentally. Like I'm in a whole different place. Like I'm just thinking about all the talks that Tracy gave us, all the mock pro days, all the mock interviews that we did. You know, I'm ready for this moment. This is my moment. I'm about to take over this whole moment. I didn't say anything to nobody. This is what's going in my mind. Like you know what I'm saying? I prepared for this. There's no way that all my training cannot feel me. I'm a little nervous. You know, I'm having a little anxiety. I'm scared. I'm excited. I'm happy. This is that day. Like, you know, I got to give it my all. I got to be able to do my best out here. That way in the future, I could look back and say, I gave my all. I didn't BS. I worked out when I need to work out. I ate the right foods. I did all the training. I didn't get indulged. I didn't get caught up with nothing outside, no outside distractions. I'm prepared for this. Mm -hmm. So once my pro day come, first thing we did was 40 inch vert, drop the 40. Boom. I'm like, oh, everybody, Ooh, let's go first. Yeah, them numbers yeah. is looking good already. So the scout is looking like, he's looking like, oh, okay, Palm Bluff. Okay, what's your name again, sir? I'm like, Isaiah, he's like, okay, yeah, you're looking like some potential right here. Then after that, we did the broad jump. I think I jumped like 11.9 or something like that. Like, I'm like, so mind you, I know I'm doing, I know I'm going to do this, bro. I'm prepared. I prepared physically. I prepared mentally. I know what I'm, I'm, I already knew what my numbers were for the interviews, the fake interviews that we did with our trainer. I already know what's, what's going to happen. Like, y'all just going to be surprised. I know I'm about to do this already. This is how confident I am. Like, I believed in myself. Right. So, um, I, I, I jumped 11.5, then now my, my best, uh, my best actual test is about to come up, which is my, my, the 225 rep. For those who are not familiar with the pro day, you go through different, you know, uh, different drills and stuff that the scout puts you through to see where you at as an individual. So I did those. Now the 225, where you got to bench press 225, how many times you can. Mind you, uh, a lot of guys that did the combine, wide receivers only doing like like the guys that they're going to compare me to are only lifting 225 about seven times, you know, eight times. Mind you, I did 225, excuse me, I did 225 practicing like 20 something times. And Tracy was telling me, my trainer was telling me, like, once you get to your pro day, you know, you're going to do 225 anywhere between 25 and 30. You're doing 20 times now and you're fatigued. Like, you've been working out all these months. Once you get some days off and your muscles be able to rebuild, you're going, once your pro day come, you're going to kill it. So I'm thinking all this. I'm, I'm just in the zone. Even though my numbers are looking good, I don't care what the scouts say. I don't care what none of my teammates say. I'm just going to grind, do what I got to do. 225 came. I think I did like 27. Well, now I did that 27. I'm like, let's go. My numbers is looking good. Like, mind you, I'm not saying nothing, but I'm just like, like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm excited. And then, uh, then now, now the big, the big drill is coming up now. That, that, what that 40 looking like, you know what I'm saying? You could, you could look good in the weight room. But well, what is that 40 going to look like? Right. Now, take my pen. I'm tapping my pen. I'm just walking around the locker room. I mean, uh, wait, I'm just tapping my pen, ready to go outside. I'm in my zone. I'm stretching. Ran a 40. Uh, first 40 I get was a 
four four nine. Boom. So now I'm like, yeah, because you get to run. Two, I think it's like two or three forties. Once I ran that four four nine, I scout was looking like. Everybody's like, whoa, oh my god, he's looking good in the weight room, and he's looking good out here, and he's six six. This boy gonna have a shot, you yeah. know. Um, so mind you, the NFL has thirty two teams. We only had one team from the NFL come down. And the only reason why he came to Palm Bluff because he already stopped in Arizona. He's, I mean, he stopped at University of Arkansas. Yeah. Arkansas is good in the neighborhood as well. Wow. Is this thing not charging? The battery running low? Or... Hold on. Yeah, I don't understand. I plugged it up. I don't understand. Might be a short. Yeah, hold on, hold on one second, bro. Give me one second. All right. Let's see. If y'all have any questions or anything like that, um, feel free to ask me anything or put it in the chat. I'll ask them. Or if it's something that pertains to the current topic, I'll ask them as well. So if y'all have any questions about anything, football. Um, if you want to ask a question that can help somebody that you know that's a young athlete, you to ask anything like that. Should be good now, bro. Right. Oh. Yeah, my bad, my bad, people. Gotta get the charger right. Yeah, so um. Yeah, so once I ran that four four man, that, the scout he was just he was just so impressed. Um, he, he said my numbers is looking good. Um, once I ran the four four, then we went out. We ran some routes. Excuse me. I did good on my routes. I did good catching the ball. Um, I, I pretty much killed the pro day, man. Like like I said, I didn't really do too good, you know, during that season. But my pro day was just my last chance. Like you know, that was my last chance to perform and to show my coaches and. This one NFL scout guy that came out that you know I'm I'm good enough to play on that next level. Um, at first I was I was a little down because we only had one guy show up, but I knew that once he gets my numbers and record that, he's gonna put that on NFLScout.com or whatever system they put that in, and hopefully that any other teams you know if he doesn't like me as a player, any other team see that and give my coach a call, and you know we see what happened from there. Yeah, nah, no, that's what's up. And then so. You had the pro day, and then I don't know how much time it is between the pro day and the draft. I, I don't got it on top of my head. but Yeah, yeah. There, now, I know it wasn't just the Rams that showed you interest. I know you, you did have a workout with the Jets as well. Yeah, and, yeah. And you, was, oh, you did your research, bro. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. I kept that. <laughs> but you did yeah, the, I don't... talk about, like, how that was just for if anybody who is, say, the upcoming senior and maybe – Undrafted free agent might be the route they take next year. Like, what was it like going to a workout? How you carried yourself and how you performed, and you know, also navigating um, the face-to-face -face aspect of talking with you know scouts and things like that. So, so pretty much once I was done with my pro day, um, that was probably like in March. I think the draft is like late April, going into mm -hmm. early May. So once I was done with the pro day, I went back home to New York. Mm -hmm. So I remember Tracy telling us. Uh, the trainer guy from Seattle told us, once you're done with your pro day, you go home, do not go back to your neighborhood and just be BSing and partying. Everybody's going to show you love or whatever, whatever. Like, you know, you're out of college, you're back home, you haven't seen people in a long time. Do not get caught up in that. You know, mm -hmm. stay focused, continue to work out, continue to grind. Yeah. So I just, I just continue to work out. I just continue to grind. Um, 
I didn't get caught up with anything. I just spent – in college, I had a son, so I was spending a lot of time with my son, you know, spending time with my fiance at the time, uh, which is my wife now, and just was just constantly grinding. I didn't really hang out with my boys in my hood like that. Um, I stayed focused. Uh, when it comes to the Jets, uh, that workout – that workout was pretty set up. That was set up prior to the actual NFL draft coming. Um, my scout – I mean, not my scout. My agent was doing some research – and he found out that the guys that are prepared, that are local guys in the area, so wherever city you're from or whatever state you're from, and you're a young guy coming up, and you don't have that much interest from NFL teams, and they're not calling you out for workouts, if you're a local guy and you're from that state, you can – I don't know I don't know if my, my agent had called the team and let them know that I was available to come work out, but they basically have a local pro – like a local second pro day slash interview – for local guys who are from that state. Mm -hmm. So that's how the Jets worked that workout happened for me. Um, once I went to the Jets facility, um, it was it was surreal, man. I was just happy to be like at an NFL practice facility. I was excited, I was hyped. And right. what had came full circus, well, what came full circle, full circle for me was, once I got to that Jets facility, all the guys that I played with in the New York State All-Star game coming out of high school, we all was done with college. So we all was local guys in New York City. We all was the same guys that was from New York City that played in the New York State All-American game, upstate New York versus downstate New York, end up coming back and seeing each other four years yeah. later as young grown men. So it was just like, like, wow. Like, I remember playing with you in an All-Star game in high school. What's going on? Da, 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 da. It was like a, a reunion because these are all the local guys. Yeah. Um, being in those Jets facilities, I had moments where I was looking around like, wow, like I'm really here. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm prepared for this moment. Like, you know, I didn't, I didn't mentally prepare for this. I didn't know this was going to happen, but it came up the pipeline and I'm, I'm blessed that I'm, that I'm happy to have these opportunities as, as a local guy in New York to display my talents to an NFL team. Yeah. So um, I remember just being in their locker room and stuff like that and grinding. And when it comes to like navigating the NFL scouts and the guys that scout me, man, I just, I just, I just looked and I just like, observed everything and just listened to what they were saying. You know, yes, sir, no, sir, no, sir, show them respect. You know, I didn't really come here to make friends. So even though I seen guys, you know, from years ago, I didn't, I'm not, you know, socializing so much, not mingling with them and stuff like that. I'm here, I'm focused. I'm here for one reason, to show these NFL scouts that, you know, I could be a potential draft pick or a potential un free agent guy that can come in and participate on the Jets. I didn't have no other workouts. No other teams call me. I end up getting this just because I was a local guy. I'm going to take this serious. Like, I'm going to take this opportunity serious. Right. And that's just what I did, man. I took that opportunity serious. And um, ain't, when the draft came, I don't know. Like, I didn't get no feedback or anything like that. I was just happy to have that in my back pocket. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And the draft did come, and you went undrafted. So, of course, that's kind of, you know, every kid dreams of being drafted, going on the stage. So your draft experience was different, but at the end of the day, you still got undrafted free agent, which you see a lot of some of the top guys in the NFL are undrafted free agents. So how did yeah. that feel after all those years of hard work, finally getting to the point where you can literally touch the dream that you've had for years? Boy, it was so good, man. I can't lie. So up into the draft, again, I stay focused. I continue to work out. I'll work out. I will go back to my high school, speak to the kids. I'm working out with the high school kids, working out with my coach, you know, working out some up, young up-and-coming guys. I'm staying focused. I'm just spending time with the family. I'm not yeah. getting caught up in the streets. You know, I, I went out, experienced college, seen a whole – traveled around the country with the team, went to the West Coast. There's no way I'm going to fall back into the, the, right. the trap of the streets. Like, I'm not going back to that. came here to be focused. I'm trying to get to the league. Um so once draft day come, like, I knew I wasn't going to get drafted. I wasn't a high-profile guy. Um, but I knew I had the potential to at least go undrafted, possibly yeah. get drafted. You never know when it comes to the NFL. Um, right. They want who they want. They're going to do research on you. You know, just keep everything clean and do what you got to do. Um, yeah. when, when, when the actual draft came, the first round came, I knew I wasn't going first round. Second round came, I knew I wasn't going second round. I didn't really start, you know, feeling anxiety or nervousness or so started to feel ready. Until like um to like the late rounds when I got to like fifth round, sixth right. round, seventh round. Now I'm like, okay, third day. But mind you, I'm still grinding. I'm going to work out early that morning. You know, yeah. I'm going to my old high school to go work out. You know, some people's like, oh, the draft is on. I ain't worried about that. I'm working out, I'm grinding. You know, if I get a call, I get a call. So the yeah. so once the sixth and seventh round come, my agent is telling me, prepare, keep your phone, keep your battery charged, keep your phone nearby. 
if you get a call from a, un, a number that's un, like unknown or that you don't recognize, you know, be prepared to answer that phone. That could be a potential NFL scout giving you an opportunity. So I'm preparing. I'm getting everything ready. I, but like I personally, I went through a lot of adversity during that time. I lost my best friend. I lost my mom. So I'm like, as long as I work hard, I'm doing this for them. I'm excited. You know, I'm, my dream's going to come true. Like, I, I'm believing this, like, in my heart of heart. Like, I'm not just saying this. Like, I genuinely felt it in my spirit that I was going to have the opportunity. I remember having dreams of being in the NFL. Um, everybody, like, if you want to talk to me, we, we can talk about the NFL stuff. Like, right. like I, I knew this was my opportunity. I knew this was going to happen. I was feeling it. Like, I don't – I'm not the most religious person, but – I just, I just knew like I was gonna be able to get an opportunity. I didn't know how it was gonna come, but I knew it was gonna come. Yeah. So once the sixth round had come, the third day of the draft, my phone rang. So mind you, I'm at my wife's house. She's my fiance at the time. I'm at her house, mm-hmm. and we just chilling. She's in the shower. Her mom is just doing her thing or whatever. Again, I don't know. We was probably they was just gearing up because you know it's the last day. You know everybody's just vibing. I didn't really want to do a big draft party. Cause I'm like, if I don't get drafted or picked up, this is gonna be embarrassing. I don't want to go down that route. I don't want people looking at me. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I'm gonna just keep it humble, like you know. So I kept it humble. I'm just watching the draft. You know, I'm feeling good. And then the third day come, uh, six six round come, I get a call. So now it's an unknown number. I get a call. It's that Washington D.C. number. So now I'm looking like, mind you, my wife in the shower. I'm like, now I'm looking. Now I'm humble. I didn't call her enough. I'm just watching. I get a call. I like I said, Ferguson. I'm like, yes, sir. He's like, um, this is Doug Robinson, uh, the president of personnel with the uh, Washington Redskins. I'm here giving you a call today. Um, yeah. We don't we don't plan on drafting a receiver, but if we do, um, if we do, we we're gonna take you as a, a, a undrafted guy. You coming for a rookie mini camp and fight for a spot? But we might draft you. We might not draft you. You know, yeah. but just keep your phone open. We might give you an opportunity yeah. up the pipeline. Uh, mm-hmm. Mind you. Doug Robinson was a guy who coached in the SWAC at Grambling. Mm-hmm. If anybody's familiar with him, he's um, the first black quarterback ever in NFL history to win a, a Super Bowl with the Washington Redskins. Mm-hmm. And he was familiar with the SWAC. We played against him multiple times. He's seen me play. Not sure if he knew my background or anything, but he just told me, you know, we're not sure if we're going to draft somebody, but you're, you're, you're on our list. So we, we watch you right now. You know, I'm not making the calls, but, you know, keep your line open. We might give you a call. Um, I spoke to your coach at Palm Bluff. You know, he gave you a great recommendation. You know, we like you. We like your size. We want to give you a, we want to give you a shot. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, so now my wife gets out the shot. I'm like, babe, I got a call. She's like, for real? She's like, oh, my God. She's like, mom. She's mom. It's just me, her, mom. They just hype. I'm like, y'all be humble, though. Be quiet because don't right. call nobody yet. Keep this low. This is, this is, this is only an opportunity. This is not guaranteed. Like, you know, chill. We going we don't, we don't, we trying to get something that's going to be more solid. So they just like, whatever, we excited. Nah, 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 we gonna go to Washington, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I called my agent. I'm like, I just got a call. I told him. He's like, all right, that's cool. But keep your phone line open. It's only the sixth round. You still got the seventh round. Mind you, I'm a, I'm a small school kid. I Ain't no way in hell I'm going to get drafted. All I know is I worked hard. I don't know how this is going to pan out. I knew I took care everything on my end. Wherever the chips fall, let them fall. I got the Washington Redskins in my back pocket. I'm from the hood, so I don't really trust anything, but I'm still like, okay, all right, I see y'all watched in. All right, I'm going to keep y'all there, you know? And um, so the end of the seventh round comes. So at this point, I'm like, I know I ain't getting drafted. I got a call. They didn't, they didn't drive me. I don't know if they, the Redskins are going to call me back. I'm going to go walk. So I walk from my house, I mean, from my, my, my wife's house to my father's house, which is probably like a 15-minute walk, just to, you know, take some steam off. I'm like, man, I'm going to go for a walk. You know, I'm happy to have this Washington Redskin opportunity, not set in stone, but you know, this don't feel right. Like it don't feel like this is the this is it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I go for a walk just to come off some steam. As I'm going to my father's house, the phone rings again. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, who this? Like, so I'm like, it's another unknown number. Like, you know, who is calling me? Like, I ain't know nobody playing no pranks on my line or not like that. It says St. Louis, it said St. Louis, Missouri, incoming call. So I'm like, hello? They're like, um, yeah, this is Isaiah Ferguson. I was like, yeah. He's like, uh, Isaiah, are you happy to be a Ram? I'm like, huh? He's like, um, yeah, we give you an opportunity to uh, come on uh, as an undrafted free agent with the Rams. I said, are you serious? He's like, yeah. He was like, um, he was like, is everything good? I was like, yeah, I'm walking to my father's house right now. He was like, I'm going to gather some information on my end, and I'm going to call you back in like 10 minutes. Yeah. So now I'm, ha- now I'm screaming on the block. I'm like, I made it. I made it. Like, and everybody in my neighborhood, mind you, they're like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, why is he screaming? Like, 
I'm just so happy. So I go to my pops crib. I tell him what happened. I got a call from the Redskins. You know, I call my agent, let him know that the Rangers called me. He's like, all right, you're going to be in there. You're going to be good. Like, you know, you got two opportunities up the pipeline right now. You didn't get drafted, but, you know, worst case scenario, you could go undrafted or you can get a rookie mini camp. So the Redskins had called back. They said, we want to bring you in for a rookie mini camp. Yeah. And I told Doug, I said, you know, I want to keep the running rookie mini camp in my in my back pocket, but mm-hmm. what we really want is the undrafted free agents. The difference right. between having a rookie mini camp opportunity and an undrafted free agency opportunity, a rookie mini camp is like a second interview. Like saying you got the job, but they want to bring you in for another interview, another workout. We're right. not sure if we want to give you this contract, but we're gonna see if you do good at this second interview, we'll give you the contract. Yeah. So I told uh, I told my agent. Pretty much what I just told you now. He said, all right, cool, Ferk. We're going to wait and see what the Rams say. We don't really want to go with the second interview, but we want to try to get something set in stone where at least to get you an undrafted free agent. Right. So after I get up the phone with him, the Rams called back and said, we want to bring you in for on an undrafted undrafted free agency contract or whatever the case may be. Um, this is better than that rookie minicamp. Um, this is not a three-day thing. This is not a second interview thing. You're going to be with us throughout uh, – OTAs, um, organized team workouts, training camp, and mini camp, and through preseason. And when you come down, you know, you pretty much just got to, you know, bust your butt, you know, show these scouts and, you know, the coaches that you are worthy to be in on this team and do everything you need to do to put yourself in a situation to be successful. And this is a good opportunity. Um, he ended up taking my information. And he asked me what airport that I'm going to fly out at. Um, he sent me the plane ticket. And, like, three weeks later, I was on the way. Um with the with the Washington with the Washington Redskins at the pipeline, once I got out the phone with the scouts, uh, the, the Rams scouts, the second time I ended up calling Doug, I said, Doug, you know, thank you for the opportunity, you know, uh, having an opportunity to come down for rookie minicamp. Mm-hmm. But we end up getting a better option with the Rams as an undrafted guy. He was like, oh, sure, no problem. You know, that's a better opportunity for you. Yeah. Go ahead and take that. You know, um, good luck on your journey. And that was it. And from there, I was I was a Ram. They had, uh, they had sent over some paperwork, signed some paperwork, got my flight and everything ready. Yeah. About three weeks later, I was on a flight going to uh, St. Louis. Right. So now, like, being in the NFL, um, what did you learn? Like, you're an undrafted free agent. Um, I'm not sure, like, the whole financial part of undrafted free agents, but I'm sure they, they do pay you a little bit. What was it uh-huh. like having to get – you get some money and then just being smart enough to manage it, um, what would you give to – what advice would you give to undrafted free agents as far as managing the money that they do receive? Because it's not guaranteed. So so going into the NFL as an undrafted guy, mm-hmm. um, undrafted guys, to be honest with you, you don't get no money. Uh, mm-hmm. You signed a contract. We, I signed a three-year deal worth $1.5 million. Nothing's mm-hmm. guaranteed. The only way this, this, this contract becomes um, – it qualifies or becomes active – if you make the 53-man roster mm-hmm. or, or that's it. Like, this, you're going to sign this contract, but you still got to come out here. We're not guaranteeing you no money. I think they gave me, like, a $1,000 signing bonus, like $1,000. Mm-hmm. Like, what is this going to I was happy with it, but it was a $1,000 mm-hmm. signing bonus. Mind you, my peers that are getting drafted have $20 million contracts, $10 million yeah. signing bonus. I'm coming in with a $1.3 million un, un, uh, unguaranteed contract with a $1,000 signing bonus. But honestly, at that point, I'm not even thinking about the money. I'm happy yeah. to – I'm in the league. You know, right. I'm going back to my project. I'm going back to my hood. Like, everybody's saluting me. Yo, you made it. You know, good luck. You know, you got a lot to fight for. You got a lot to fight for. You know, go make it happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? So when I first got to the league, uh, during the training camp, you don't get – I got my $1,000 signing bonus, which is a check you get when you first got there. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I'm in the – first of all, when I get to the facility, I'm just like <laughs> – yeah. I'm just – bro, I'm just like – Right. This is crazy, man. Like, yeah. just thinking about all the guys we play with, bro, in dream college and, yeah. you know, like, college, like, like I'm, I'm one of them ones. Like, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't one of the – I wasn't the best guy. It just goes back to the intangibles. It's going back to, you know, taking care of the little things, you know. It goes back to before going to a college party, going to work out, you know, after the party, going to get another workout in, you know, taking care of my academics, you know, like, you know, doing it for my neighborhood, you know, 914, we here, you know. Mm-hmm. I was excited, man. I worked for this. Like, you know, people used to ask me, like, how does it feel? Like, are you shocked? No, I work for this. Not to be cocky, but when you work for something that come true, it's like, this is, I've been doing this my whole life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Of course, I'm going to do some trials and tribulations. There's been times I doubted myself, but I worked hard, man. I'm just, you know, I'm blessed and I'm happy to have this opportunity. Right. And when I got there, you know, my, I know my contract is pretty much some BS. I don't get none of this money. It looks good on paper, but I don't get none of this money. 
get my thousand dollars. They picked the check in my locker. I'm like, you know, our first NFL check. Okay, it looks good. I'm happy. I'm in the yeah. league or whatever, whatever. So once you become undrafted, like I said, that contract is not valid at all. Like, you know what I'm saying? 1.3 is not valid. That's not your bread. Mm -hmm. um, so now you go through training camp process, OTAs and training camp. So the whole, the whole thing to get that contract to be yours and to be for it to be valid, you have to make it through OTAs. You got to make it through training camp. You got to make it through rookie mini camp. You got to make it through preseason. You have to go through all these hurdles to make sure this contract to be valid as an undrafted guy. Yeah. So, excuse me, being in the league, I mean, it was tough, man. Like, it was, it was one of the – it was kind of like junior college because I remember being in junior college when we was practicing one day and Coach Finn was telling us, um, look beside you. We, we in the stretching line. He was like, look beside you. He was like, yeah, he's your teammate, but you are not here to be your brother's keeper. Like, you know, it's, it was the opposite of everything that I learned. Like, you in football, we's together in this as family. You are not here to be your brother's keeper. You are here to, to compete and outwork that guy. You know what right. I'm saying? So when I got to the league, it was kind of like the same concept. So I was like, okay, it's a doggy dog world out here, but I'm familiar with this. Being in junior college, you know, that was the mindset we had. Like, you know, you are not here to be your brother's keeper. You are here to compete. You are here to take his spot to get a Division One scholarship to take care of yourself. In the league, it was, it was the same concept. But when I was at my four-year institution, it was more like, Brothers right. keeper, we together, family, you know, same thing in high school. So even though it was it was that same approach, it was something familiar for me going through the ASA process, being in the league. It was kind of like the same concept, bro. I promise you, bro. Right. Like being in the league, being in the ASA, it's like the same thing. Yeah. Um so as I was playing, bro, it, it was tough. You know, it was it was guys, uh it was guys like playing with guys like Tavon Austin, you know, yeah. having Nick Foles, who's a Super Bowl championship winning quarterback, being yeah. around him. Uh, being around Case Keenum, you know, yeah. and all them guys, uh, being around, you know, Todd, Todd Gurley, you know, being around them guys, like, like I'm, man, I'm in the league, I'm one of these guys, like, you know, I'm here to right. eat now before we here, like, that's the mindset, I'm going to eat, I'm going to grind, I don't care, I ain't come here to make no friends, you know, I came here to eat, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this bread, I'm trying to get my family out the hood, like, that was the whole mindset, and um, so times went on, time went on, I'm constantly grinding, I went through, it, it went through, it was kind of scary because, it was guys that I came in with, came in with that would be my locker mate. Mm -hmm. And then the next day that my locker mate is gone. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So as I'm going in and out of practice from the field or being in meetings, I'm coming back to my locker and the guy that I was just with is gone. So I'm like, we'll do that. We'll do that every day. We'll do that. Dudes is getting cut, getting cut, getting cut, getting cut. They're going back home or they're going to different teams or whatever. So you not knowing as an NFL guy that that day or that next day might be your day. Like, you know what I'm saying? You might be gone. So. Yeah. You get a little nervousness and scaredness, like you don't know what's gonna happen, like you know what I'm saying. Right. So that was the mindset, but I knew that as long as I take care of everything I need to take care, you know, it's gonna work out for me. Like still trying to be positive, you know. Like I've been through a lot off the field. There's no way I can't handle this league stuff. Like I'm gonna make it through this. I'm gonna be one of them guys that make it, make it that 53 man roster. Right. Uh, so so time went on, you know, constantly grinding, finally getting acclimated. Man, I got bunches of stories I could go on for days just being in the league. But um, just to fast forward that process, um, it was good to be in there. Um, uh, one of our coaches, I'm not sure if anybody familiar with uh, Derek Garcia. Um, uh, not Derek Garcia. What's the quarterback Garcia guy? Oh, um, Jeff Garcia. Jeff Garcia. Play. Jeff Garcia. He used to play quarterback for the 49ers. He right. was our assistant wide receiver coach. And I kind of clicked with him because he was a player, so he kind of understood how – was be like being a young guy. He was new with the Rams, so he was a new guy in the facility. He kind of helped out the older guys. In my mind, I'm like, shit, this is Jeff Garcia. Like, I'm about to pick it. I'm about to ask all these right. questions. He's a Hall of Famer. Like, you know what I'm saying? He has his own story of himself. He's been through the trials and tribulations. He can relate to me. So I'm just, coach, what you think I should do? How can I get better? Da, 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 da. So he just helped me out. You know, it was rough in the league, but it was it, it was one practice that I felt like, like I belong here, like you know what right. I'm saying. Like this is I can I can tear this yeah. league up. Like I'm catching balls, like everybody dash me up. Yeah, for like all the water people, like yeah, for you killing it. Keep it up. You gonna stick? Like this is your. There was one day I was just like, man, I know I can do this. Like you know what I'm saying. I'm studying like crazy. You know, I'm doing everything. I'm not going out. I'm not trying to get caught. I'm doing everything I gotta do so I can stick on this roster. Man, I'm trying to get paid. I'm trying to have this opportunity playing the league. This is a dream, like you know. Yeah. And um. So, yeah, as that time went on, going into, I made it through rookie mini camp, made it through training camp, preseason comes. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, oh, God, now I'm in the preseason. We're about to play the Oakland Raiders. 
We fly out to LA. Uh, we in a private jet. We uh we fly into the Four Seasons Hotel. Never never even heard of a Four Seasons Hotel. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like this is the life. I'm I'm with me and Tavon clicking. You know what I'm saying? Like he brought me to his house. You know he we driving in Maybachs. You know G wagons. Like you know living a life. Like I'm around millionaires right now. Like I'm doing like I'm I'm one of the guys. Like you know what I'm saying? Like and I know I'm blessed because. I was never the best athlete coming out of high school. wasn't the best guy coming out of ASA, but I just knew as long as I take care of little things, I'm going to be here. So I'm, I'm, I'm here now. Like, I arrived, like, yeah. you know? So I was just learned. So when I got to the league, I thought that I was going to be able to learn from the older guys. Like, you know what I'm saying? That I could take, you know, some game from the older guys that have been in the league in five to ten years and take some of their stuff and carve it up to my, to my own thing and use what I learned from them, what I, what I already know myself, to source that up and, you know, take that and get some longevity out of that. But when I got to the Rams, I realized we was a young team and most of them guys, I don't know, it just felt like, it just felt like some of the core was like, uh, I'm not going to teach this young guy so much because I don't want him to take my job because if, if he take my job, now I go home, he gets a job. And nobody don't want their job to this. It's cut their business next man up. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to give you a little bit, teach you a little bit, but I can't give you all. Like, you know, that's the kind of energy it was. So I was just trying to kind of find my way, you know. But everybody around me thinking I made it. Like, you know what I'm saying? My family, everybody treat me like I made it. You know, I was being reintroduced to family members that I already knew. Like, being in my neighborhood, like, oh, you remember him? Da, 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 da. People, like, asking me for money and stuff like that. I'm like, yo, I don't, I had a $1,000 sign-up bonus. And went throughout preseason and training camp, you get $700 a week. Like, I just basically a regular job. I don't have no money. Yeah. All the guys, what people don't realize, the way an NFL contract is set up is that you get paid. If you do sign a big signing bonus, you get your signing bonus, but if you got a $20 million contract, that contract doesn't activate until the season starts. So as I'm playing in the preseason, the training camp, I'm not way at the NFL, my contract is for sure not guaranteed, and the guys around me still not even getting paid at the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that contract don't get – Valid until the beginning of that season. NFL guys only get paid 16 weeks out of 12 month year. Mm -hmm. So they squeeze all that $20 million into 16 weeks, or if you make it to the playoffs, et cetera, et cetera. So as I'm playing, dudes think I'm paid or whatever, whatever. I first made it to the lead, this, that, and the third, but I'm just, I'm still fighting. Like the only people who know what's really going on in here is just the guys that's here and, you know, my close family members that I'm telling them, they know the real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So going into the first preseason game, fly out to L.A., get to Oakland. Now I'm nervous. I'm excited. I'm in the league. My family members came down. You know, I'm here. Like, I arrived. It's my opportunity. Like, you know what I'm saying? And once I was playing Oakland, man, like, everything came crashing down, bro. Like, to be honest, like, it was just like a great day. But it was, it was a weird day. Like, it was a confusing day, too, because I ended up tearing my ACL that first preseason game. Like, a knee injury. You know what I'm saying? So – and it's so crazy because um, during that time, as I'm playing the game, mind you, I played the entire game. Like, mm -hmm. I had, prior to me tearing my ACL, I don't really still don't know when, what play I tore my ACL. But when I think about it, I kind of think I know. I end up catching a ball one play in the preseason. So now I'm like, I just caught a ball in the NFL. Like, dudes can tackle me. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm dragging them. Like, I'm like, oh, this is the league? Oh, yeah, let's go feed me. Like, you know what I'm saying? So quarterback, they kept calling me. You know, once you think about the league, if you if, – well, well, in my situation, if you get hot, they're going to keep trying to feed you. Like, you know what I'm saying? So they calling the plays, me throwing, running plays, throwing me the ball. I end up catching one pass. Other pass, I really don't know what happened. So uh, another – so when I caught the pass, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the Oakland Raiders stadium. They have, like, a baseball stadium where it's, like, the baseball is, like – the baseball field is built in where it's like a whole bunch of dirt. So I end up catching the pass when I got tackled. I got tackled on the dirt, so I scraped my knee up. So my knee is just scraped up. So I'm like, you know how when you play football, you get banged up. I'm like, all right, this ain't nothing. So after I scraped my knee, I'm just still going. And then they end up calling a screen to the running back. I'm blocking for the running back. He ends up getting tackled behind me. And as he's getting tackled behind me, I fall backwards, and my knee get caught up, and I felt like a burning sensation on the side of my knee. And I didn't think nothing of it. I thought it was just scraped up because a couple of plays before that, that's the same knee I scraped. So I'm like, I'm good. Like, so I ain't worried about it. I ain't telling you that I'm not going to sit here and tell the coaches that I'm hurt. I'm in the NFL. Like, I'm yeah. trying to make it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And so I was like, whatever. Hold so on, that's the play. I, it's going yeah. off.